Of course, when we start something new, we all make mistakes, but these are the best lessons to become better. I wasn't spared either, I've made mistakes and I've learned a lot from them. However, I want to make sure you won't go through the same mistakes, which is why in this video I'm going to cover the biggest mistakes you can make when just starting out with pastels. Mistake number one is using the wrong paper. Invest in good quality pastel paper with a textured surface specially designed for a pastel work. It will make a significant difference in the final result and make your blending much smoother. I recommend Pastel Matte from Clairefontaine. This is the most popular for pastel artists because it provides everything you need. Excellent texture, great adhesion for pastels, a velvety effect that turns the sandpaper-like texture into a smooth one after adding a few layers, and most importantly, multiple layers can be added without any issues. While this brand might be a bit expensive, I totally recommend starting with a very high quality paper from the beginning. It's better to invest your time in mastering and learning on high quality paper instead of experimenting with all those different brands. To showcase the colossal difference paper makes, I will demonstrate blending on the mentioned paper and compare it to the blending on a mixed media paper. As you can see, the paper dedicated to pastels interacts very well with the pastel pigment, combining smoothly with the paper without any issues and it is very easy and quick to work with. Since the paper specialized for pastels has a suitable texture for this art medium, there is no problem, that's why it's crucial to choose a high quality paper from the beginning so that you can get accustomed to it and learn directly on a quality surface instead of trying numerous types of paper which may lead to wasting time and possibly money. Specialized papers for pastels ensure a smoother application and blending allowing for very detailed work. They provide the opportunity to add multiple layers and even correct mistakes easily at times. On the other hand, with the mixed media paper, the pastel powder slips everywhere, cannot adhere to its texture at all and it seems as if I'm just spreading the pigment everywhere without seeing any progress. If I were to try using such unrecommended paper for pastels, I would give up on that drawing within the first seconds because it would become a struggle to create something acceptable. Working with an inappropriate paper for pastels can be quite frustrating. When the paper isn't right, it can prevent you from achieving the desired results. For beginner pastel artists, this can make the whole experience unpleasant. It's common for beginners to blame themselves and their skills rather than thinking that maybe the materials used are the problem. Therefore, I mentioned this again because it's very important, beginners should always consider the quality of the paper. You can create a beautiful drawing with lower quality pastels but with very high quality paper but not the other way around. No matter how good and expensive the pastels are, if the paper doesn't work well with this medium, nothing else can be done. Mistake number two, using dirty tools. Working with dirty blending tools or pastels can result in unintentional color mixing and muddying of the artwork. Cleaning your tools regularly is essential for a clean and precise application. To avoid this, I recommend to always have a piece of cloth around you. When applying a lighter pastel color over a darker one, for example, and you want the color to remain pure when applying it to another part of the artwork, gently wipe it off on a cloth to ensure a clean layer. The same principle applies when using blending tools and moving from one area to another one which has different colors. Darker colors can be challenging to erase completely, but by applying a bit more pressure on the cloth, you can remove as much pigment as possible, making it safe to use again. Since we can't buy new blending tools for every new drawing, especially the soft tools for pen pastels, which can get very pricey, the solution to save money and expand their lifespan is to clean them regularly. Mistake number 3. Applying too much pressure. 
Pressing to hardwood pastels can lead to difficulty in blending, loss of control and much more issues. Because in their natural state, pastels are highly pigmented, they should be applied with a lot of care and patience. Here are some negative effects of this mistake. Difficulty in layering. If you press too hard when creating layers, you run the risk of quickly filling in the paper's texture, significantly reducing your ability to add additional details later on. A good drawing typically requires a minimum of two or three base layers before adding all the intricate details. Just keep this in mind when aiming for a high quality and detailed artwork. Difficulty correcting mistakes. Pastels being highly pigmented can be very challenging to correct once applied. Mistakes may not lift easily and attempting to make adjustments can lead to unintended changes in color or texture. A hard application can damage the surface of the paper, making it very difficult for you in the future to add any additional layers. The texture of pastel paper is like some tiny craters that gradually fill with pastel pigment each time a layer is added. Pressing too hard while applying pastel is like causing an avalanche of pigment that floods these craters, diminishing their ability to hold multiple layers effectively, increased dust and smudging. Excessive pressure can create more dust and smudging on the artwork. Of course, when more pigment is applied to the paper, a significant amount of residue is left behind, creating even more dust. Since we often need to blow over our pastel drawing to remove the dust, it's best to minimize this and do it as less as possible because otherwise we are going to fill the room with a lot of residue and the air is going to be full of dust. While there isn't evidence that pastel is toxic for us, if you don't have a very well ventilated space, this dust can stay in the air, which isn't very good for your lungs. That's why it's crucial to keep the dust levels to a minimum. The paper I use, Clairefontaine Pastel Mat, is doing a great job of keeping the pastels in place, but of course I still see a bit of dust here and there, but mostly it's great for keeping the levels of dust at the lowest. When there's more pastel pigment present in your artwork, there is a higher risk of accidentally smudging it during the process. This smudging can be very challenging to correct, making it important to manage the amount of dust and residue to maintain the integrity of the pastel artwork. Constant hand cleaning becomes necessary, consuming valuable time during the creative process. Mistake number 4. Using fixative. If you are using Clairefontaine pastel mat, which I recommended earlier, you won't need a fixative because this paper is holding the pigments exceptionally. Applying fixative can actually damage your artwork. I've personally witnessed how it turned a vibrant and detailed drawing into a lifeless piece. I've tried numerous fixatives and all of them have had a detrimental effect on my drawings. I understand that the opinions on this matter can be divided, but if I were you, I wouldn't use fixatives. It's just a personal recommendation. If you want to experiment it beforehand before taking my word on it, just feel free to do it. Instead of focusing on reproducing images, as a beginner, you should strive to understand and learn from the process. Copying without comprehension can affect your artistic growth. The act of copying art, especially for beginners, can be sometimes a double-edged sword. While it's a common and useful practice to develop your technical skills, there's a potential drawback when this becomes your primary focus without a deeper understanding of the artistic process. When, as a beginner, you engage in copying without truly understanding the underlying techniques, you may miss out on valuable learning experiences. Here are some very big issues that can be caused by making this mistake. Technical skill versus artistic understanding. Copying allows beginners to hone their technical skills such as line work, shading and composition. But without delving into the why and how of each stroke, 
color choice or form, beginner artists may lack a genuine understanding of the artistic decisions made in the original artwork. Limitation in creativity. Relying solely on copying can limit the development of creativity. Artistic growth comes not just from replicating existing works, but from applying learned techniques to create something new and unique. We should let the creative kid within us play with this creativity and create whatever his heart desires. Building a foundation for style. Every artist, even me, develops a unique style over time. While copying can help in understanding various styles, your true personal style only emerges when you combine the techniques learned with your own interpretation and expression. Without this deeper understanding, you may struggle to develop a distinctive artistic voice. Stunted artistic growth. Copying without comprehension may also lead to a plateau in artistic growth. As you become comfortable replicating existing works, you will miss out on the opportunity to push your boundaries, experiment and explore your own artistic potential. Enhancing observation skills. Understanding the process involves keen observation. You should analyze how light interacts with the forms, how colors harmonize and how compositions are constructed. This active observation, rather than passive replication, enhances an artist's ability to see and interpret the world around them. As artists, we all aspire to have a unique art style that's immediately recognizable by our followers. But like everything important in life, this also requires time, practice, continuous learning, and a deep self-awareness as an artist. Don't forget that, above all, we are all humans and we need to give ourselves the time to learn, be patient with ourselves and embrace all the mistakes made when we start using pastels because in the end we are going to learn from each one of them. Everything is a learning process and time will make us better at everything we give attention and put our passion into. I really hope I could help you with mentioning all of these mistakes that I also made in the past and saved you some headaches and frustrations as a beginner pastel artist. If you want to see more of my tutorials, I would love for you to join my subscribers community. And if you want to be the first one to be noticed when I post a new video, just click on that bell button and that's all fixed. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in my next tutorials as well.